Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Rent Prep for Landlords. This is episode number 315, and I am your host, Eric Worrell. So in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the migration from cities to rural areas and in some places or some cases, even international locations that's happening right now. So we are seeing a mass migration that is starting to happen and will continue to happen because people are finding cities less and less attractive due to COVID-19 and also rioting and what the impact of that will be and the fact that they can work remotely as we've seen the number of remote uh, employees skyrocket in recent months. We're gonna be talking about all of that right after this. Welcome to the Rent Prep for Landlords podcast. And now your host, Eric Worrell. So the uh, first article I wanted to read here uh, and kind of summarize is from Forbes.com. The author's name is Jack Kelly, a senior contributor and the uh, title here, uh, and this is from June 2nd, 2020. So just a little bit ago. Uh, Cities will see citizens flee fearing continued riots in the reemergence of COVID-19. So Manhattan, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, Philadelphia, and other large city in the United States have become meccas for people looking to accelerate their careers and cultivate an active social life. The big cities offered an abundance of uh, employment opportunities and vibrant nightlife. People paid exorbitant prices uh, for homes and apartments, and they viewed this as the cost of entry uh, into having a better life and job. Seemingly, almost overnight, the mood drastically changed. Those living in places like New York City found themselves stuck in small, crowded apartments as they were ordered to stay home. The restaurants, clubs, gyms, hair salons, museums, concerts, and sporting events abruptly closed down, which is important to mention because that's half the reason, you know, some of the people are moving there. And then it's uh, saying that residents started questioning why they are paying so much money for rent when they can't avail themselves to all the offerings of Manhattan. As 40 million Americans lost their jobs, city dwellers had to wrestle with paying a large amount of their salaries in housing costs and taxes while either not having a job or holding on to their positions for dear life. If that's not enough to make someone want to move out of the, for greener pastures, the peaceful protests against the killing of George Floyd turned into something more sinister. People unrelated to the protests used this as an opportunity to riot, loot, vandalize, and run rampant, causing chaos and mayhem. So, you know, I'm not really telling you guys anything you don't know at this point, but the interesting thing is what's happening right now as far as remote work, right? So if you combine those two factors of being stuck in a little box in the sky that you're paying, you know, $3,000 a month for in New York City, uh, you don't have all the amenities that you're used to having in the social life. And then now your job is said that you can work remotely. Well, uh, in New York City, obviously the salaries are pretty high. So let's say you're making $100,000, but your cost of living in New York is, you know, going to cost you five grand a month and you can move to beach town for half the cost. Like why not? You know? So that's one of the uh, things that we're seeing right now is that people are starting to flee the cities. And I apologize. I think I got like a almond uh, shell in my uh, throat here. I need to drink a little uh, sparkling water. Feels like a uh, really poor product placement. Like today's REM prep podcast is brought to you by sparkling ginger water, but you guys get it. So what I was reading on this, and actually I was having a conversation with somebody who is a specialist of remote work. He actually runs um, a remote conference for specifically for remote uh, employees. And he has said there's been a huge exodus already from San Francisco, LA, and New York City. And especially in San Francisco, where it's a lot of tech-based uh, industry, we're seeing that Twitter, Facebook, and Google are saying that you don't have to return to the office this year. And I think Twitter said that actually ever, if you want to stay a remote employee, you can stay a remote employee forever. So if you've got a $150,000 a year job out in San Francisco, but your apartment is eating up $50,000 of it a year. I mean, it doesn't actually sound that great after that, right? Because you still got taxes and whatnot. But now that same employee is going to Mexico. They're going to Texas. They're going to Florida. What a lot of them are doing is they're relocating to areas that have a lot of sunshine because why not? Everybody loves sunshine. But they're also relocating in, uh, to areas where uh, there is no state sales tax. So a lot of the pundits are claiming and saying that you will see an exodus, a mass exodus from these big cities with high rents that are going to places like Florida and Texas where there is no state uh, sales tax. So you figure if you know, you're know you saving that, you know whatever it might be, 5%, 10% range on a $150,000 salary, if your significant other you know, has a salary like that too, and you're both able to work remotely, that is some serious income where you might be adding $30,000 to your bottom line just by relocating. So there's a lot of incentive to do that. And somebody who I mentioned a lot in the podcast, who I follow quite a bit, Scott Galloway, who's a, uh, a marketing um, 
professor from NYU, he was saying that this may actually have repercussions too on swinging certain states uh, politically. So uh, the, one of the things he had mentioned was uh, nearly 40% of uh, Manhattanites are talking about relocating. And if they relocated to Florida, it would actually swing that state to a democratic state. Not a lot to do with real estate, but I thought it was pretty interesting in the fact that New York City having such a high population density, if it was to disperse into Texas and Florida, um, it would actually change the political lines there, which is pretty interesting. Another article I read here, uh, this one comes from the San Francisco Chronicle. This is from J.K. Deenan on June 1st, 2020. It said, San Francisco, Silicon Valley rents plunge amid downturn. Never seen anything like it, in quotes. So the cost of renting an apartment in the Bay Area plummeted in May as layoffs and the increased flexibility of working from home drove a double-digit drop in some of the nation's most expensive housing markets. A double-digit drop. Uh, the drop has been uh, reported 14.3%, uh, up to 14.3% drops in rents in one month. And then, you know, this is kind of one of those cases of like, you know, the fattest pigs get slaughtered. Well, I don't think there's a fatter pig when it comes to uh, the cost of rent than San Francisco right now. Uh, you know, San Francisco, New York, Seattle, Los Angeles, all of them. Uh, but when you have such a high rent, it's like there's not a lot of room for growth. And you're already leading the pack. And then all of a sudden overnight, everybody can work remotely in the city. And then on top of that, uh, you know, there's riots or whatever may be happening. And then the fear of high population density areas uh, being more impacted by COVID-19. And just like that, you know, if uh, somebody had all of their investments wrapped up in Silicon Valley, like that is painful. So it's pretty, it's pretty incredible and amazing um, just to see this kind of quick uh, impact on the rental market and real estate markets. And it's, uh, you know, not one that anybody would have predicted. Uh, so uh, when I was talking to that one guy who runs that remote conference, he was saying that this is the time, if you were to invest internationally, where you're going to get high C-level or um, high-paying individuals who are going to want to live in Bali or are going to want to live in this, you know, uh, community uh, in Mexico that's going to have, you know, all these amenities and it's going to cost them half of what their tiny apartment in New York or San Francisco cost them. So he said that this is where you're going to see uh, kind of that Tim Ferriss four-hour work week, you know, if you're familiar with that reference. Basically, you know, uh, being able to live in Thailand and live like a king on a, a, a good salary back home kind of thing. So really interesting stuff. Um, I'm going to be watching this for sure uh, over the coming six months just to see what happens. And I actually landed on a uh, blog post too, and it was like top 10 reasons to move to Mexico. And, uh, you know, it lays out some pretty interesting stuff as far as like healthcare, affordable housing, low cost of living. You can actually drive to the U.S. depending on, you know, where Mexico you are. Beautiful beaches, rich, vibrant culture, uh, expat, or expat uh, havens or strongholds can be found in several areas of the country. So if you were thinking about investing internationally, um, probably where those expat uh, havens are might be uh, kind of colonies where you might see more Americans moving to. You know, I, I just I think it's really interesting you're going to see some all of a sudden big time money moving into Mexico or different different areas uh, for people that are, you know, working for Google, Twitter, Facebook, what, what have you. So it'll be fascinating to see how this all plays out. Uh, I will link to all of the mentioned uh, articles um, that I have mentioned here. I will let you know that the one does have a paywall on it. The uh, uh, which one was it here? Uh, da, 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 San Francisco Chronicle. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, so if you're looking for the information on San Francisco, it might be a little uh, gated. But uh, yeah, the super interesting stuff. Um, uh, I'll definitely be keeping an eye on it. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the uh, comments on the actual blog post. We always send those out with the newsletter uh, if you uh, want to check out where this is on our blog. And uh, yeah, we always uh, look forward to uh, hearing your guys' feedback and seeing what you think as well. All right. Well, hopefully, hopefully, if you're listening to this, you don't own a lot of real estate in those cities because I know this is a really big buzzkill episode. Um, but of course, anytime there's, you know, the tides going in and out, there's always uh, changes and opportunities and uh, there might be some, uh, some future opportunities uh, for you to reinvest in areas that are going to become more popular as well. Talking to you, Texas and Florida. You heard it here. Probably not first, but you heard it here. All right, guys. I, I look forward to catching up with you next week. I hope you have a great week and take care. Oh.